So I was going to ask the children and parents to come up for a moment. We were going to talk about uh, some of the symbols of Palm Sunday. Okay. So I'm glad to have you here today. So here you see a, a picture of somebody's painting of what they thought it might have looked like when Jesus, and, and what is he on? Do you remember? Donkey. On a donkey. And it said there was a donkey and the, the cab, okay. full, full, a colt of the donkey alongside. So it must have been like a mama and a baby donkey, right? And Jesus is on the mama and, and the baby next door, that's beside it. But you see what's in the people's art? We didn't have palms quite like this, do we? We have the little ones like crosses, but see the palm branches that people are, some are waving, they're putting some on the, on the road, and some of the people put their coats down on the road because they wanted to honor him. You know, it's kind of like the red carpet. They wanted to honor him coming into Jerusalem. So there were a lot of people in the crowd around him that thought he was going to be the, some kind of a savior, and uh, they were hoping he would be. Someone believed that. And some of the people we're going to hear about on Good Friday didn't believe that. And they were against him. Uh, but uh, there were people that were celebrating Jesus coming to be the Savior. So we got that on the altar. We've got a couple symbols over here. So what do you, what do you see on this one? Those are some more palm branches, aren't they? Yeah, some of the things that people were waving is in celebration and putting on the ground for the donkey that Jesus was riding to go over. How about this? Crown. 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 Because, why? Jesus is king. We're going to hear about that in the sermon in just a few minutes, okay? So those are some things for us to, to remember uh, as we think about Jesus entering Jerusalem. Uh, in you know, in, in a lot of cultures, kings would ride what? Horses. horses, big horses. But in the Jewish culture, the Old Testament talked about the king riding a donkey because it's an idea of being more humble, being a servant. Okay? We're going to hear about that too. Okay? So, be thinking about palms, celebrating, and crown because Jesus is king and him coming to be savior, okay? Thank you for coming up today. We'll see you later. Oh, and I got a storybook, it's got the same thing in it that I forgot. So that's here at church. If anybody wants it, it's got the whole Holy Week thing uh, Palm Sunday. And Monday, Thursday, oh, it's got, it goes back to Christmas too. Last Supper, Good Friday, so that's available if anybody wants to borrow it. And there's a, a magnifying. magnifying glass, so you can look up things in that story. If you'd like to take that home for a week, somebody feel free. All right. Our Gospel reading, Matthew 21, is the text today. In Jesus' name, amen. Please repeat after me. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is the best thing, is the best thing that, ever that ever happened to me. To me. Do it one more time. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is the best thing that ever happened to me. Now you need to remember that, right? John Bonham. Anybody know that name? John Bonham. Maybe if you lived in Texas. Well, you used to live in Texas, but you maybe you didn't learn this. John Bonham was a young lawyer from South Carolina. He'd only been in Texas for three months when he volunteered to fight at the Alamo. Small chapel, actually, a church, but became a fort near the Guadalupe River in San Antonio. On February 23, 1836, as General Santa Ana and his 2,000 Mexican troops gathered, the 182 men in the Alamo prepared for battle. Just as that time was approaching, 
John Bonham was sent out, breaking through the enemy lines, riding his horse to try to find help in Goliad, Texas. But no one in Goliad was willing to come to fight. Next, Bonham rode to Victoria, Texas. No one in Victoria was willing to fight. So what did James Bonham do? He rode back, back to the Alamo, back to the battle, back to the fight. Pretty certain he would die. We're in a series of sermons from Matthew's Gospel called Places of the Passion. Today we begin our walk in Bethphage, a village on the Mount of Olives. At Bethphage, Jesus begins his ride into Jerusalem, back to the fight, back to the battle. Most certain he would die. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken up, asking, Who is this? Who is this? That's the question for Palm Sunday. That's really the question for the ages. Who is Jesus? We get this right. We get everything right. We get this wrong. We get everything else wrong. Who is Jesus? Well, there's a lot of opinions in our world about this, right? Some say Jesus is uh, like a therapist. He helps us cope with life's problems. He tells us how valuable we are and encourages us not to be so hard on ourselves. Some say Jesus is like a coffee lover. He drinks fair trade coffee at Starbucks, loves spiritual conversations, goes to film festivals. Some say Jesus is like a coach. He helps Christian athletes run faster and jump higher than non-Christian athletes. Some say Jesus is like a hippie. He says, give peace a chance. Imagine a world without religion. Remember all you need is love. Some say Jesus is a spiritual guru who says, get out in nature and find the God within you. Some say Jesus is a revolutionary. He teaches us to rebel against the status quo. Stick it to the man. Blame everything on the system. Some say Jesus is a good example. He shows us how to change the planet and help a little old lady across the street. Then for those of you that are a little older, you may remember the plastic Jesus. Paul Newman starred in the movie Cool Hand Luke, and he sings a song in the movie called Plastic Jesus, and it has these lyrics. I don't care if it rains or freezes, long as I have my plastic Jesus. You know, the one that you put on the dash of your car and would protect you as you drive. The plastic Jesus believer sees the Savior as a good luck charm a rabbit's foot, a four-leaf clover, someone they turn to when they need a favor. Lots of different views about Jesus out there. We need the real Jesus. Enter Matthew. Who is the real Jesus? Matthew tells us. Who is Jesus? Jesus is our humble king who serves. Matthew writes, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them. Jesus is king. Jesus employs the law of royal levy. The law of royal levy gave a king authority to get anything at any time from anyone. The Lord needs them. Who is Jesus? Jesus is a king. Well, check that. Jesus is the king. But what kind of king? Matthew writes, Behold, your king comes to you, humble and riding on a donkey. Now if you compare this with the verse Matthew is quoting that we heard read earlier today, Zechariah 9.9, 9, Behold, your king comes to you righteous and having salvation, humble and riding on a donkey. It's 
a little surprising that Matthew omits Zechariah's phrase, righteous and having salvation. Both words appear frequently in Matthew's Gospel, 17 times the word righteous, 15 times the word salvation. By leaving them out this time, Matthew emphasizes Christ's attribute of humility. In Matthew 11:29, Jesus makes this clear when he says, I am humble and lowly in heart. The donkey further accents Christ's humility. By not riding on a horse, Jesus announces that he doesn't come to bark out orders. He comes, we know, to wash feet. Jesus doesn't come to dominate and intimidate. Jesus comes to love and forgive and shed tears. Jesus doesn't come to marshal an army, but to stretch out his hands on the cross for us and for our salvation. Though rich, this king became poor so that through his poverty he might make us rich in a way beyond our wildest imagination. A king like this is worth shouting about. Jesus is a king, all right, but Jesus is a humble king. Jesus uses his authority to serve. Serve who? Well, serve us. He says in Matthew 28, 20, 28, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for men. So Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey, back to the fight, back to the battle, most certain he would die. Why would he do that? To give his life as a ransom for many. A ransom is a sum of money paid to release prisoners. Prisoners to what? To anxiety, prisoners to emptiness, prisoners to fear, Prisoners to sin, prisoners to selfishness, prisoners like us. Martin Luther says it this way, Jesus ransomed us not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. Prisoners like us, prisoners to sin. We have been redeemed and ransomed bought back by his blood. Jesus is our humble king who serves us to redeem us. Who is Jesus? Jesus is our mighty warrior who fights. The crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. I was reminded earlier this week that Hosanna is one of about four or five Hebrew words that, that we probably all know. But we may not remember the meaning. Hosanna is a word that means save us now. It's from the root of the word that makes Jesus' name. Which means salvation. Save us now. Couple that with those palm branches. An ancient sign of victory, Jesus is what? Jesus is a mighty warrior. Jesus is a humble king who serves, but Jesus is also a mighty warrior who fights for our salvation and for our resurrection. Jesus fights sin and Satan. Jesus fights demons and death. He wins on that third day, his resurrection day. We're looking forward to that next Sunday. Who is Jesus? Jesus is a radical prophet who shakes up the city. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken up, verse 10 says. Prophets do that. Prophets shake things up. And we need shaking up. We easily become lackluster, lethargic, listless, lukewarm in our faith. This is one of Dr. Lessing's favorite sayings. <laughs> come weal, come woe, our status is quo. Which basically means 
we don't like change. We like things to get one way and we're comfortable there. Prophets shake things up. Isaiah, do you know this? Isaiah walked around naked for three years. I can't even imagine. I can't imagine. Jeremiah. Jeremiah buried his underwear. Hosea. You might remember this one. Hosea married a prostitute named Gomer. And when she ran away, God said, go and bring her back and make her your wife again. Prophets shake things up when they're true prophets of God. And Jesus, what did Jesus do to shake things up? Jesus allowed people to spit on Him, beat Him, impale Him, spike Him to wood. Describing His death, Matthew 27 says, the earth shook and the rocks split. But there would be even more shaking. Describing Easter, Matthew 28 says, and behold, there was a great earthquake. The crucified one would no longer be dead. He would be risen. That shakes everything up. The resurrection means Jesus is who he says he is. Jesus is that prophet who shakes the city. He shakes it when he comes in. He shakes it when he dies. He would shake it when he rose again. Let's think about the donkey for a minute, hypothetically. <laughs> the donkey woke up Monday morning, her mind still savoring the afterglow of that most exciting day of her life. She found some people who had been there and commanded them, this must be a donkey like, like the one with, uh, uh, what was the name of the prophet in the Old Testament that the donkey, Balaam. Uh, this donkey talks, I guess. The, the donkey found the, some of the people who had been there the day before and said, throw your garments down. And they looked at her in amazement and walked away. Miserable heathens, the donkey muttered. I'll go to the marketplace. She asked the people in the marketplace, where are the palm branches? Yesterday you threw palm branches. Hurt and deeply broken, the donkey went home to her father. Crazy donkey, her father said. Don't you get it? You are nothing without Jesus. Funny story, right? But maybe we're the ones. Our Heavenly Father says to us, don't you get it, you crazy donkeys? You are nothing without Jesus. And it's not Jesus the therapist. It's not Jesus the coach. It's not the plastic Jesus. I'm talking about the real Jesus. Our humble King who serves. Our mighty warrior who fights. Our radical prophet who shakes not only the city, but the whole world. Who is Jesus? Please repeat after me. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is the best thing, is the best thing, thing that ever happened, that ever happened, happened to, me to me and the whole world. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in this Christ Jesus. Amen. We offer our gifts to the Lord.